Hi guys, my name is Yannick Reis, I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to my new video. In one of my latest videos, I showed you how you can rudimentary use the shared preference data store. While the preference data store mimics the shared preference, it lacks of support when it comes to using complex data structures. If you, for example, have many flags, you would need to declare independent variables for each of these flags. However, there is a workaround because you could also declare all these variables inside of an object and then serialize this object as a JSON structure and just save this JSON structure to your preference data store. But with this approach, new problems arise. For example, you have the additional complexity of deserialization and serialization. And of course, it's also a new point of failure. But don't worry, there is an alternative. The Jetpack Data Store not only provides the preference data store, but also the Proto Data Store. The name Proto comes from the Google protocol buffers that this um, component uses. The Proto Data Store allows us to define such protocol buffer structures that will later be generated to Java classes. These classes can then be stored in our app storage. But that's not all. There's also an option to generate further cotton extension functions that will facilitate the handling of all these structures. But enough of the talk. Let's dive into a practical example. To give a little introduction into our example for today, let's think about what we could want to save Maybe we want to um, track the app startup counts and also want to know when the user started the app for the last time. That is exactly what I prepared for today. Let's click on this app icon here. Oh, and we can see the counter says I opened up the app already twice and the last opening is uh, 5.13, which is the current time. If I click on reset data, the uh, data resets and if I reopen the app now we can see that the counter now again says one and the last time is once again 513 okay the <laughs> the clock just went to 514 but you get the concept okay now before we can actually start make sure that you have these dependencies in your app first we have the data store dependency itself. Then we have the protobuf Java Lite and also the protobuf Kotlin Lite dependencies. While this is on your module level, also make sure that you have the com Google protobuf plugin included. When we now go to the project level, the Gradle, also make sure that you have the uh, protobuf Gradle plugin included. Now, in order to be able to generate code from our protocol buffer files, we also need to go back to our module build gradle file and adapt the protobuf block here or add it to your build gradle file and also add the artifact here and the um, options here for the generation auto task. So enable the Java option light and also the Kotlin uh, option light. And then finally, go to your progress uh, rules file and also make sure to add this line here. Otherwise, the Proto Data Store won't work with your release uh, build, which um, will get obfuscated by R8. Now with the dependency setup, let's take a look at how we can create such a protocol structure. To create such a structure, go to your project. You can switch to the uh, view here. And then create a new folder under source, main, and then Proto, and then you can create here a new proto file. So in our example, we have here an app startup params .proto. And if you go into this file and you don't have the proto plugin installed, Android Studio will prompt you with um, the option to do that. However, I will uh, quickly show you how that should look like if it got successfully installed. So. Here you can see protocol buffers is installed and yeah, that's the plugin you should go for. So now let's take a look at this file. What do we have here? 
In the first line, we tell which syntax we're using. In this case, we're using Proto3. Then we tell the structure our package name, which is uh, the following. And then we also say Java multiple files equals true. If you would have more than just this uh, structure here, all additional enums and so on, which uh, maybe could get created, would get nested into one single Java file. With this option here, it would create multiple ones. So in the next line, in line six, we tell the actual name of our class, which is app startup params. And then we have an int32 startup counter, uh, which uh, refers to an integer in Java, and also an int64, which is a long. At the end of both these lines, you see one and two, and these are the indices of the variables. So it defines at which order these variables get created in our later Java file. So if I click on make project now and build our project, I can go to build generated source proto. And here I can find a Java folder and also a Kotlin folder. So if I open it up, you can see we have here an app startup params which refers to our proto file here and also a builder and in the kotlin folder on the other hand you can see that we have an app startup params kt so let's quickly jump into the java class here and if you scroll up we can see that we have the integer here this is startup counter and we also have our startup Unix timestamp, which refers to the long, as um, previously explained. And if you go into the app startup params KT, you can see that we have some helper functions here. So we not only have a function for resetting our variables, but also a function that mimics the copy function of data classes, which is really helpful as we will see in a second. But before we can actually start using our new class, we need to do one additional step. And this step is to create a serializer for our new class. In this case, I prepared already the app startup param serializer we need to implement the serializer interface which comes from the android x data store core as you can see here and we need to tell it okay it's for our app startup params this is some kind of boilerplate code because it's um, essentially every time the same when you declare a new data store value so you have a default value which is in this case only the default instance with um, zero for the integer and also for the long and then we define a function where we read from the um, data store which uses an input stream and use this helper function here to yeah retrieve the actual output which is a non-nullable app startup params uh, watch out it can throw an exception which is not handled in this case and then we have also the write to function which uses an output stream note that we are using here suspendable functions if you're still sticking to java you will need to use the respective rx java functionalities or dependencies so as an additional step we define extension function on the context and if you also watch my preference data store video it might be familiar to you to defining such a function here. So we're defining a simple delegate with the by data store, at which we not only define a file name, but also a serializer, which is essentially the serializer we just implemented here. The file name is arbitrary. You can use whatever you want. In this case, I used app starter params uh, PB, which stands for protocol buffer. So now that we have everything set up, Let's proceed with the actual implementation of the example I previously showed you. First, let's quickly jump into the main activity. And here you can see that we once again use state hoisting. We have a view model here and pass our yeah, view state, which is an app counter and also last startup to our content composable. And the timestamp refers to a string. So it seems like we are doing some kind of conversion there from our long to a readable string value. And we also have a function to reset our data. Then we have a card here, 
and this card contains a column and that on the other hand contains a row which uses uh, labels and a spacer here um, which is <laughs> just a small wrapper for the spacer composable and also a button that um, triggers the reset data function. So let's quickly get up and jump into our main view model. The main view model extends the Android view model. Why? Because we will need the context. And if you're using the application here, our app's application context can be used inside this view model safely and without the worries of memory leaks. Then we define our view state here, which we already saw, an app counter, and um, also the last startup param. And we're using a state flow here to hold this value. Then we have a job here um, for collecting from our data store. And we have also a variable here that refers to our helper function, as you can see application context dot app startup params data store. I can quickly jump to it and you will see that it's the um, delegate we previously defined here. So then in the init, we collect from the data store and that also will be familiar to you if you um, already are using the preference data store because we have also no longer a synchronized API to access it. We need to yeah collect um, from our data, which is uh, once again a flow. And as soon as we receive an updated value here, we pass it to our state flow and update the current state. Just to mention, we have here a convert to readable format, which takes the um, Unix timestamp from the app startup params and converts it to a readable format. We do that by taking the simple date format, get the datetime instance, and just call format on the long value here, or to be more specific, on the wrapped uh, date object. If the Unix timestamp is uh, zero, which um, is this default timestamp value here, then we will just output no app opening registers yet. And the only case in which that will show is if you click on reset data. And this reset data function is the last thing we will take a look at. Here we just call um, update data on our params data store. And yeah, we just pass in the default instance once again, uh, which we already saw at the app startup params serializer. So now we saw how we can read from our data store, but now you ask yourself, Yannick, okay, uh, thanks for showing us, but where is the part where we update the data store? And that is one thing I <laughs> forgot to show you. So let's go to the um, application here the proto data store application in this case. And um, we once again have an app coroutine scope here that is then used to launch a new coroutine on the onCreate function, which is called as soon as the application gets created. And therefore we use this to track our app counts and also to set the last time the ad got started, which is the system current time millis. Then we also make use here of the copy function, which is from the app startup params KT. So this is um, the Kotlin helper function I showed you previously. And now we have the option to directly access the current values. So we can um, just use the plus equal operator to increment the startup counter and don't need to um, do stuff like this here. So access once again the params and then here the startup counter and then we say um, plus one. And of course that's a very simple example but think about you have like 20 variables and you only want to update one of them and the rest should uh, remain the same. Then it's really really helpful. Note, however, that this is once again an asynchronous function. We also don't have the option for synchronously updating the uh, proto data store. Um, and that's why we also need to make use here of a coroutine. I know we already took a look at that, but if we go to the main view model once again and um, track the view state, 
we see, okay, it gets collected here. The view state um, will be updated and the new values get passed to our underlying composable. And that is essentially the proto data store. Of course, there are many, many more possibilities with declaring these protocol buffers, but I don't want to get into detail now, maybe in a different video. In my opinion, it takes away the overhead of declaring many, many variables for key value pairs, for flags and so on. You can just store them in one object and yeah, have a very nice API to update and read from them. And it's way more secure to use this approach instead of the old uh, JSON serialization stuff by using um, objects. And yeah, the setup process is quite a little bit um, complex in my opinion and not that obvious how to set it up. That's why I made this video here. You can also check my Medium article where I go more in depth about some of the parts here. And I also um, uploaded the project you see here into a GitHub repository. Um, so you don't need to type everything from uh, the video here. I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon.